Good morning. How are you? Friday. Poets day today. I'm not going to go and have a look at the uh, the lake down Nash Road because as you expect it's you know as you can see from the amount of rain around it's still pretty wet here so a couple of things i wanted to talk today lab work and nurses and in particular nurse training i uh, had yesterday afternoon off and drove over to my lab, which is in Maidstone, which is about an hour away in a car. And uh, they don't uh, collect and deliver from me because I'm just too far away. In fact, I think they only keep doing my work for old time's sake because I've used them since 1984. And um, we've got a postal strike on at the moment. We had a guy who wanted a couple of, let's say, veneers, and uh, we posted them to them. We should have got them Monday before last, but due to the postal strike, they didn't get them till last Thursday, and then they've only literally cast them up and, and scanned them today or yesterday, and, uh, or they, well, it's Friday. They scanned them Wednesday. And then they said that there's going to be another delay because they, that scan has to go off and they get them made somewhere else, etc., etc. And so this uh, guy, who's, you know, once his veneer's done, he's going to have to wait three, four weeks. And that's an unacceptable delay, in my opinion. In fact, the whole reason why I drove over the lab was to drop some lab work off, which we knew would have an unacceptable delay if we posted it. So we've got a, we had a postal strike on Wednesday and Thursday this week. The work was done on Tuesday. If we uh, tried to uh, drop it off at the post office, it wouldn't have been picked up on Wednesday or Thursday. It would only have been picked up today, in which case um, it probably wouldn't have got, got to the lab until next Tuesday or even Wednesday. And so by driving over yesterday, Thursday, I actually managed to make sure that the lab work got to the lab in the sort of time span that it would have done if the postal uh, office have been working so <clears throat> I mean I know it's a bit strange for a dentist to uh, uh, spend two hours in the car driving one lab piece of lab work over to the lab but uh, it very much fits in with our philosophy of uh, the patients are private patients and they're paying for a private service and by private service I mean a proper private service I mean, don't mean NHS private or independent private. I mean, you know, really best efforts private. Uh, so I spent an afternoon, I could have spent, I suppose, watching Belgium, Belgium get kicked out of the World Cup. Um, uh, going, fighting through the traffic to get in and out of Maidstone. Now, an hour or 55 minutes or an hour and five back is not, it's not that bad, you know. But it is a... Uh, above and beyond and that's what I think private patients are prepared you know I think they are entitled to expect above and beyond because we charge them prices which are above and beyond but it is thinking it's making me think seriously about getting a scanner because if we'd scan these preps and we'd scan the opposing bite and everything and and emailed it across to them then they would obviously they'd get it the same day and the postal strikes would suddenly become irrelevant wouldn't they so and this is why change occurs, not because it's you know people think it's a good idea or necessarily, or it's because it'll give you it gives you a competitive advantage, or or not changing leaves you at a competitive disadvantage, which is you know and it's taken the postal strike to push this thing into focus so that it's it's now obvious that if I don't uh, if I don't get a scanner, I'm going to be doing perhaps a lot quite a lot of driving over to Maystone, possibly even once a week. And really, I can't be doing with that. So I'm going to look into scanners, and uh, we've got the BDIA ex exhibition coming up. What was the old BDTA? And uh, that's in London 
this year in, in a few months time so i might pop over to uh, excel and have a look at a few scanners and see what what we can get um so the other the other thing was is nurse training and the reason why i'm bringing this up now is because uh, the nurses all got their results yesterday and um we had a receptionist who uh we, we believe in cross training as you know and went showed some interest in being an qualified as a nurse and has got an aptitude for it so uh, by, by an aptitude I mean an enthusiasm okay not a necessarily um, not necessarily um, that she's uh, knows everything and is, is a genius but because but she's keen you know to do the job and in my book, that's the most important thing. You know what the old saying about it's easy to make a cheerful person, uh, train a cheerful person than it is to um, make a person who's already trained cheerful. And unfortunately, she failed the exam. And she showed me uh, the email that they send you when you fail. And what they do is they send you a list of all the modules and the scores in all the modules and show you how it doesn't add up to the pass mark and and I was frankly I was gobsmacked I was completely gobsmacked by the length of this email I mean it must have been 10,000 words long and that's just the summary that's just the headings of the subjects uh, there was there was a list of stuff that is so long I honestly think that if I if I publish that list, which I might, underneath this this video, and challenged anybody to ring me, to, to volunteer for me to ring them and ask them a question, any question on any part of that syllabus, I don't think they would get it right. I don't think they would be able to say that they could get every question that I might ask right. Now, I know you don't have to get every question right, but the point is that the uh, the, the extent and the scope of the syllabus is just so wide now uh, for, for a dental nurse post, right? But, um, you know, it's just the lunatics have definitely taken over the asylum in terms of nurse training. And that's because it's been uh, commercialised, hasn't it? And firms like Harriet Ellis are advertising to people and saying, you know, give us your money would you like to be a dental nurse you know give us your money and we can train you to pass the dental nurse certificate qualification and we get a lot of emails mainly because they're easier for the boys and girls to do uh, when they sign up to harriet ellis and say uh, you know i've signed up for a training course dental nurse but it's a condition of the training that I get a position, you know, that I work in the surgery. Because Harry Ellis don't train you the practical side. Oh, no, they leave that up to me, the dentist, to do that. They just train you on the colour of mops and the colour of fire extinguishers and stuff like that. And uh, the safeguarding legislation, etc. And, uh, and we have to routinely write back to these people who have already probably parted with their money and, and say no. Uh, you know, we don't have a position for a trainee nurse. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and uh, I'd, I'm not at all sure that they are informed at the, uh, when, at the point at which they sign up. Not only that it's... Um, that, that I'm sure they are informed that they do need to get a placement, but I'm not entirely sure they're, they're given the full position on how difficult to get a placement it might be. So, you know, and it's the same. So, so, so the, I think the training associations have got a lot to uh, be held responsible for, because not only in uh, misrepresenting to a certain extent the uh, the position to the trainees, because let's face it, they have to get a certain volume of trainees going through, don't they? They make their money out of signing people up, and training them, and they are joining a long and not so proud tradition of uh, training organisations that. Uh, churn out various uh, professions and jobs irrespective of whether or not the need uh, is there for them which are put universities at the top 
but also uh, schools that advertise for uh, driving instructors, get your driving instructor qualification. You know, can you drive? Then you could be a driving instructor sort of thing approach. And uh, phlebotomist, you know, would you like to get a job as a draining blood out of people? You could, we could train you as a phlebotomist or uh, injecting uh, uh, Botox and uh, fillers and stuff like that, you know. Now, I understand it's to the candidates, you know, you have to do your own due diligence on these courses and make your own assessment of how likely you are to get a job at the end of it. But then also, you know, that when someone like that goes through the course and they don't fail and they do fail, they do fail, then, um, you know, you have to look at the training association, the training organisation and say, is that a failure of the training organisation? Was that person quite obviously never going to pass? And, and as a result, um, you know, uh, has tried to reach too far. Or uh, were they um, adequately trained? And again, with a lot of the organisations, and what we're going to do is have a look and see how, um, how well the class did, you know, how well the training organisation did in terms of pass rates, because... Uh, you know, if you've got like, uh, I don't know, 20 pass and only one failed, then it's one situation, is it? But if it's it's uh, uh, seven or eight failed and only 10 passed, then I think that's a different, that paints a different picture, doesn't it, of the training organisation. And I think they know that, uh, you know, so I dare say they do try hard to get people through. But they don't try as hard as they do to get the money, which is basically what it's all about. They're not in the business of... Um, producing dental nurses because they think that's a, uh, a social uh, good. They're in the business of um, taking money for training people. Um, you know, and then you go into the wider debate about higher education and to what extent is, do they commoditize education and just take money for training people uh, and provide very little value in return. And I think when you look at the amount of training that's provided, you know, the amount of... Uh, how many lessons a week, how much contact there is a week. Um, I think from my experience of my most recent experience, it appears to me that it consists of uh, giving the uh, trainee a copy of uh, Levison's and expecting them to sit down and just read it for a year. And that's... You know, that's quite frankly, that is a very, it's a piss poor way to um, expect someone to pass an exam, isn't it? And everything else is done online. Even the exam is done online. So, uh, you know, it's, it's very, very uh, hands-off and cheap uh, type of training that I don't think is, uh, is, is at all good, considering that we have as a profession moved towards uh, an overly bureaucratic approach to the profession. We are not, you know, we've gone from uh, uh, an, autocrat an autocratic approach where the dentist would decided everything to um, uh, a, a bureaucratic approach where everything is done by the book. And uh, one symptom of that is the Care Quality Commission, for example, which again doesn't uh, pay any attention to the clinical standard, the clinical quality of the work, and is, is arguably ineffective because of the DeMello scandal where they uh, signed somebody off who, who was, you know, later they then had to recall over 20,000 of his patients because he wasn't sterilizing things properly. And then, um, you know, they've saddled the entire profession with this bureaucratic authority and, and the requirement to keep bureaucratic records to an extraordinary degree, you know, even to the degree where, uh, you know, if you, you've got a um, ultrasonic bath, uh, to, uh, to ultrasonic your instruments before you, or after you've washed them, but before you sterilize them, um, you, you know, there are five tests you have to carry out every day just on your ultrasonic bath to make sure it's working, including what they call a visual inspection test which what I, what I used to call just looking at things, you know, to making sure that everything looked okay, nothing looked amiss.
So, and all of this weighs down. This is a this is a dead weight. This is just a heavy hand of bureaucracy uh, weighing down on the profession and adding to uh, inefficiency and adding to, you know for no clinical benefit, for no benefit at all, no patient benefit, no health benefit. Uh, just straightforward pen pushing for the sake of pen pushing. And despite all of their uh, protestations to the contrary, and the fact that they, you know, oh, the mea culpa, we've seen the light, we are going to reorganise things, we're having a consultation on how we are doing things so differently, which is just a massive great bloody PR exercise by the CQC, trying to tell people, oh, you know, we're not the massive dead hand weight of bureaucracy that everybody thinks we are um they're they're still there's no, no sign of them letting up on anything like uh, the small businesses like we are and can, you can tell that i mean i've seen this this is uh, the reason why i'm so angry is that i've seen this happen over my practicing career when i uh, started practicing levison's was a tiny book i mean basically the, the dsa uh, didn't need to be registered with the general debt so you could take a girl from school who possibly wasn't academically all that bright, but was very enthusiastic and did want a sort of a career. Dental nursing is a good career because you can relocate with your husband to another part of the country. You can get a job as a dental nurse quite easily if you're a good dental nurse anywhere. Uh, the skills are transferable. You know, everybody, all the dental nurses pretty much work the same way. Uh, you could get, now you can get things like x-ray certification and and, uh, you know, experience in implantology and stuff like that. But except to the extent that they're just an attempt to dilute the, the, the dental uh, surgeon's grip on the profession. You could, if you know, once your nurse had had her hepatitis B jabs and she'd learned how to mix uh, zinc pelicarboxylate and zinc phosphate and uh, how to sterilize things without, uh, you know, properly, then she was a useful nurse. And she was a useful nurse. And uh, then along, along came, along came Pam Swain and the British Association of Dental Nurses. And just threw the most giant monkey wrench into the gearbox of dental, of dental practice by insisting stamping their feet and insisting that they be afforded some sort of equal representation at the GDC alongside dentists and having a much larger number of members, you know, obviously, although they pay much less, still being a significant part of the GDC's income and therefore, and, 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 and being offered uh, a place on the GDC uh, in return for uh, convincing, which did, they didn't need, you know, I mean, she didn't need to be told to convince her members. She was trying to convince her members that they were persons of worth, persons of note. Uh, they were entitled and uh, uh, had, uh, you know, were being downtrodden and uh, wages are being depressed by the fact that uh, <clears throat> they weren't uh, accorded the uh, acclaim of being a registrant and so they walked the, the entire profession uh hoodwinked in my opinion by pam swain walked into gdc registration and then and then and there was a few like early murmurings of discontent about who's going to pay our registration fee you know to, and then <laughs> and then along came uh lockton and uh, Lockton insurers, uh, working with Pam Swain, try, managed to convince all the dental nurses that they needed uh, vicarious liability insurance, and that they were going to get named as uh, <clears throat> uh, on uh, any negligence claims, and that they needed to have legal advice, and that they needed to have legal cover. And um, <clears throat> to the extent that Lockton had to almost uh, uh, manufacture some, some sort of claims against nurses to justify this claim even though the nurses nobody who sued a dentist had the slightest slightest idea of the, of suing the nurse uh, alongside you know in the same way as now if you uh, you know the rattan case you've got a situation where someone's 
uh, should have sued the associate, and the associate was quite happy to be sued and had medical cover, but then they but they decided to sue the practice owner just because they were just, I don't know why. Do you know what I mean? They don't know why. So now we've got a situation where nurses are, you know, okay, you know, they pulled up the drawbridge. Okay, fair enough. That's, you know, good for them. Uh, but now uh, a lot of, um, we, we lost a perfectly good nurse because although she's um, a good nurse and was grandfathered in to the profession and um, took a break and then um, found she couldn't get back into the profession just because she didn't have the qualification and uh, her, her uh, registration had lapsed. And, and now we've got another situation where we've got a very good nurse and I had to take her aside yesterday and say to her, look, the fact you failed your exam does not mean you're good, not a good nurse. You are a good nurse. You know, the problem is with the system. The system has failed you. The, the, uh, the training organisation has let you down. The bureaucracy, with which we all daily struggle, has let you down. This ridiculous um, emphasis on including everything in the syllabus because that, you know, to commoditize the training, uh, to, to justify the fees that people are charging uh, off of what I think are fairly vulnerable young women for the most part. Um, I think that that's, that's let you down. And perhaps we let her down as well because we just sat there and watched her reading this uh, bloody Levison's day after day. I have never seen, I can honestly say, in, even when I was at dental school, I have never seen anyone work harder at getting through an exam than this girl. And yet she's failed. And I'm furious about it. I am quite angry about it because uh, she's an excellent nurse. She really is. She is, she's pretty much, you know, I mean, my regular nurse uh, phoned in sick yesterday and the, Ellie stepped into the breach and she nursed for me all morning all all morning yesterday and i had absolutely no problems with her and us we were doing fillings we were doing impressions we were you know she was sterilizing we were and she knows every aspect of the job from selecting a, a reamer or, or a root filling uh, you know a thermophil filler or something right the way through to taking a rubbish out on a friday she knows every aspect of the job. She should be a qualified dental nurse. And yet, for some reason, she isn't because, uh, because the, the system has let her down. And, and what can be done about it? You know, I'm just going to have to sit down with her and perhaps go through the syllabus with her and, and, and see if we can't level her up in some of those areas where she, you know, she was like, she was still learning she was still learning the nerves the cranial nerves the day before by learning i don't mean for the first time you know i mean just going over them you know and um and then when she came away from the exam she said well you know a lot of what i learned wasn't on there and it's true because they're not interested in asking you cranial nerves and stuff they're just they want to know what color mop does what Anyway, sorry, sorry about this bit of a rant, wasn't it? But I mean, I am furious. I'm furious. I'm sitting here beside myself. Hello. So, um, all right then, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.